Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 43. Today it is the Halig Tree. Now if it's the first time you've watched any of these guides, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. If you have any tips for this area, then stick them in the pinned tips comment for other people to look over. But otherwise, we are in, um, what is it, Ordina? I think that's it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we have a dagger with Assassin's Gambit on and the, uh, the what's the holy one called again? The Defense Talisman? Uh, the Halig Drake talisman the Haley drake talisman plus two on and as well as like i said a dagger with assassin's gambit on now assassin's gambit is going to be particularly useful for this initial area of the game so we highly recommend you go and get it from bernal uh, in the volcano manor now we're picking up a stone, a stone sword key like right there as soon as we warp in so don't forget to get that but here we are at the first grace and we will be showing you the power of assassin's gambit in a second there is a lot of these uh the little horn piper guys and assassin's gambit just means they will stay the fuck off your ass and uh, trust me just getting peppered with these guys wherever you go just is not worth it so assassin's gambit just means that they just leave you alone for the most part unless you're right up next to them yeah um if you're not using assassin's gambit in this area you will be getting peppered off of um like holy damage bubbles constantly from all angles on these branches. So, in theory, you could try and max out your holy damage resistance by wearing the armor with the highest holy defense. And that would have probably helped even more. But then you'll be lacking on physical defense, so it's really up to you. You get by with what we're doing here, but it's still very possible, especially right at the end, to end up getting one-tapped by uh, the the great Oracle Envoys, the, the biggest of the bunch. Yeah, now what we just killed there was the medium oracle envoy, and they can drop the envoy's longhorn. There's another a one, as you can see. fantastic weapon, the uh, yes. envoy's longhorn. People have quite rightly said in the comments that it is it is the way to kill anything that is significantly larger than you, so be that Placidus X or... I mean, Christ, it even works on Malekith, and Malekith has 80% holy resist, so <laughs> it's... Uh, an exceptionally good weapon, but if you were wanting to farm one of those, um, before you burn the Erd Tree, before you go to Faramazula and complete Faramazula, farm it from the one closest to the West Capital Ramparts Grace. That is the fastest and easiest way to get it. Yeah. So uh, we're just heading up the, what I, would, what I would say is if we're looking south, the rightmost branch, and uh, we've just came from like the main branch there, and the main branch is the one that kind of obviously branches out into the other ones, but it's the ones that specifically have the ants going up and down it. So from there we got uh, Prattling Pate, my beloved. Now, uh, for where we are currently is where we were looking down on that branch just before the first um, large envoy uh, that, we've, that we killed. And now uh, we're just going to ignore these little ones for the most part, uh, but now there's some ants. So currently we're on the main branch, or what I would consider to be the main branch. And, uh, I mean, really, this is just a case of just following along with exactly what we we're doing. Um, but definitely, there's, like, a few fairly decent enough items on this area. And uh, if any of these guys do get aggroed to you, you can just kill them very easily. Especially the little ones. They don't have much in the way of defense. Um, they're more about harassing you from a distance. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the big ones and the very big ones you've really got to worry about. We're going to be seeing one of the uh, great Oracle envoys shortly actually i believe there's one at the top of one of these branches so uh heading south up this is a, what i would say is this is uh south up the main the mainest branch i guess and uh we're just going to take care of these ants and then right up here is the uh the great oracle envoy of which they can drop the um what's it specifically called the the biggest horn they can drop the biggest horn there's three horns they drop the big one yeah, the one that they're wielding. Um, Envoy's great horn, that's it. Sorry. Yeah. it's Honestly, it's worse than the long horn. You'd be better off with the the medium ones drop. Getting the Envoy's crown there, which yep. actually boosts the power of the Envoy horn's weapons. So that will boost the small one, the medium one, and the large one by, I think, about 15%. So it's a pretty substantial buff. That is quite good, actually, yeah. Uh, so put, again we're just reapplying assassin's gambit periodically even if it's not completely worn off we really just don't want to get caught lacking 
And trust me, we really, really, really suggest you have Assassin's Gambit on for this because, you, like, the amount of, like, just ranged damage that you have to take without it is quite significant. Oh, yeah. Especially right at the end of the main branch. Um, there's a great Oracle Envoy overlooking it. And if you get caught lacking there, you are in for a bad time. Yeah. The, yeah, the amount of damage that big bubble shower does to you is kind of wild, to be honest. So, grabbing a Smith and Stoney off... Uh... It's kind of hard to orient yourself. If I was to say, if you're looking south up the main branch, this is this the first branch to the left, technically, but it's uh, it's very subjective what you would say what branch is what. But we're gonna take looking south the the left. Oh, sorry, the, the first branch to the right. This is the first branch to the left, and uh, if you're looking south, that is. But ignore the orientations. Just follow along with specifically where we're going. Um, yeah, this is another section where the video portion of the guide is going to be arguably more useful than the commentary of the audio portion. Yeah, definitely, because, like, trying to accurately describe what these branches are via audio is just, is just ain't it. You really just have to be paying attention. But up here uh, is a little bit dicey because there's one of these uh, big plants and you can kind of get caught being peppered off the envoys as well as that... Um, the, the plant's, like, AoE blast attack thing. Uh, and this is a, also a bit where you definitely will be glad that you have Assassin's Gambit on because you do not want to get caught peppered off all the shit in this area because uh, there's a lot of envoys that can get you from up here. So, again. Uh, and there's also another a stone sword key. So that's two in this area. Useful. Getting the preserving bolluses. And then we just drop off the edge here right onto this uh, big fungus. And, and then back to the main it. branch. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see it all, it all loops back around to the main branch. You start off one branch, you head down to the main one, and then you just go through the the branches off the branch. But, yeah, now we're going to do this uh, kind of secret branch that leads up to the, the giant envoys. There's two of them. And uh, be careful on this drop. You can fuck it up. But I'm not, this is, again, another bit where you really want Assassin's Gambit because running up to the envoys they've got a really wide field of like vision i guess and they can like like just pepper you from like a huge distance so this allows you to just uh get prepped and get the run up on the the giant ones and uh when it comes to this you probably want to just be buffing as much as you absolutely can you should probably put a golden vow on as well um because the amount of damage these guys can inflict is like huge and you don't really even do that much damage to them um yeah, um, you luckily avoided the uh, the bubble attack because that really is where the lion's share of their damage comes from. Um, their melee attacks do hurt, but nowhere near as much as the holy damage projectiles. So and even then, the, the melee attacks honestly were doing enough damage that it's like pretty dicey. You may sure, want to put, yeah. you may want to put a rune arc on for this particular part because it will massively increase your survivability against these guys specifically. Um, pretty much almost nothing else in Halig Tree is quite as hard as these guys, if I'm being honest, if, from my opinion anyway. Um, it's just so dicey in this area and you really don't want to have all the souls that you've got currently and then dying at this particular area. So just be careful, might be worthwhile putting a rune arc on. Obviously we don't do it with the rune arcs because you might not have one. But if you do have one then, by all means. But yeah, we're just there uh, for the sake of time, just... Uh, just running and grabbing that uh, ash. I can't even remember what ash that was. It was so quick. Uh, the Oracle Envoys. Okay, yeah, I thought it might have been. That's probably actually quite good against certain bosses. If it's weak to holy damage, like if you're fighting, say, Cemetery Shades or something, or <laughs> Death Birds, or... Oh, that'd be pretty know, good against Death Birds, yeah. Yeah, anything vulnerable to holy damage, it'll it'll put in the work. Um, make sure you have um, Flame Cleanse Me equipped. Probably should have said that right at the start. But, uh, yeah, Flame Cleanse Me is going to pay dividends in this area because, as you might expect, there is Scarlet Rot everywhere. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, specifically, Flame Cleanse Me should just be a, a mainstay for the guide build. But, obviously, if this is your first time watching, um, hopefully you're not playing along one-to-one. -one. Make sure you have Flame Cleanse Me. If you don't have it, go and fucking get it. Because you will need it. <sighs> So here we are at the first, well, I guess the second grace, and it does get a little bit easier from here on out, so that's nice. And uh, I guess now we're in, like, Halig Tree 
town or some shit. There's a whole bunch of misbegotten in this area, and uh, I guess they're a little bit harder than the misbegotten at the start of the game. But these guys, uh, the misbegotten, the one that we just fought, they can drop the, uh, what's the iron cleaver, I think that is? Yeah, that's right. Iron cleaver, misbegotten shot bow, um, old fangs, as, which are a crafting material. Um, but yes. the notable drops really are the cleaver and the bow. Um, and then the, there uh, are the some arm. taller ones in this area, I was just about to say, that yeah. can drop the long haft axe. And there are the even bigger ones, um, the leonine misbegotten. Which can drop the um, iron great sword. Uh, yeah, so our game actually glitched a little bit. Right there where that item is over the jump, there should be a Leonine Misbegotten. We didn't fight it, we didn't kill it, it's just not there for some reason. So uh, be aware, there should be an enemy down that bit, and we just don't have it for some reason. But there is a rock grease up here on a body, and now uh, we are going to make the jump. Yeah, we were and... just flabbergasted that there isn't a Leonine Misbegotten yeah. standing in front of it. <laughs> um, if you uh, do have to fight that Leonine Misbegotten, um, you could just grab the item and bolt, like we yeah. are doing. But if you were going to fight it, then Lion's Claw is going to be your friend, because Lion's Claw will either stagger it or flatten it. This is true. Um, but now, to be fair, it can put down a lot of damage. It can. So again, be aware, most of the enemies can fucking stack damage on you in this area. So watch that little bit there. There's some guys that are trying to cheekily push you off the edge, because of course there is. And these are the misbegotten that can drop the long haft axe. Yeah. Um, about the same toughness as the ones we were fighting in uh, Snowfield, if not a little bit stronger. So just be aware that that is going to be the, the trend for Halig Tree and uh, Elf Isle, um, both parts of which will be in uh, in this episode. Yeah, I mean, it's basically um, all the Halig Tree, if you ask me, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why there's a distinction, but there is. Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, really understand it either. It's like, well, it's a legacy dungeon and then another one, but actually they're both half the size of Lindell, so... Yeah, yeah. we thought we thought this was <laughs> going to be two parts. It's actually it's perfectly fine in one part. Um, but yeah, yeah just... again, moving on, this next part is... Uh, well, it's, it's initially seems tricky. It's not. There's two Miranda flowers down below. And uh, picking up that fire grease on the um, the bridge. Or, uh, was it? yeah, it was on the bridge. But we're just going to run past all these guys. Just grab the Ancient Dragon Smith and Stone. And then just grab the grace. Uh, this is absolutely the best method for doing this. We tried fighting. There's this. Th that specific combination of enemies is just a fucking nightmare to deal with. Um, because of the Miranda flowers and how tanky they are, because there's two of them, trying to kill the flowers is out of the question, but then trying to kill the misbegotten whilst the flowers are attacking you, also out of the question. So just don't do it. Run and grab the items and then your life is going to be a lot better for it, because that Leonine misbegotten does not drop anything guaranteed. Sure, it could drop the Iron Greatsword. Who gives a fuck? We've got two great stars. <laughs> That's very much going to be the stance for this area. If you don't yeah. have to fight it, fucking don't. Just run past it. Fight an alien mind misbegotten, a couple of winged misbegotten, a couple of regular misbegotten while you're getting peppered from Miranda's prayer. Fuck that. Yep. Just run away from it. Ain't happening. No, so it is not. That's Golden Rune 12s picked up and uh, uh, Smith and Stone 6. At this point, you absolutely should have a fully upgraded weapon. If you don't, uh, get one for... Make, make sure when you're in this area, your weapons are fully upgraded. Okay, that is... Um, don't don't die a fucking hero thinking you can come here like a plus 23 or some shit. Get your weapon upgraded. Um, so we just jump down here to the ants. There's kind of nothing here other than ants. Uh, <laughs> there's a... Uh, yeah. But you, have to, you do have to jump down here to get to this... Uh, inside the building that we're on top of. Oh, sure. Um, I will say, actually, on the topic of getting your weapons upgraded, might be an idea, even for the guide build, to... Uh... Right, I'll talk about this in a second. Make sure to kill yeah. these Spirit Caller Snails, because there are a number of Crystallians that will be summoned. You can see one there just on the right. Killing the snails despawns the Crystallians, and as you can see, they do a lot of fucking damage. So kill those snails before you kill anything else. Yes. Um, you there was one like... next to the building as you came out. There's one sitting out here in the open, and there's one just over a ledge on the, uh, what I'll call the south side of this building. Yeah, so I was 
you should probably just use Lion's Claw um, and nothing else. I was uh, just trying to like, oh, maybe it's faster using a jump on L1. Just line up the Lion's Claw and hit it because the thing is, is that doing that, you will then kill the snail through any attack um, that, you know, the crystal you might hit you out of a jumping attack or you might fucking miss time or something. But the Lion's Claw's got better tracking. So yeah. we're jumping onto on this roof, getting the Smith and Stone 6. Now we need to jump back into this building. Now, uh, this can happen. Don't let that happen. Uh, you're gonna you're <laughs> gonna be, do it like that instead. <laughs> yeah, do it again, but properly this time. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of items scattered about in here. Just grab them. The enemies in this building are a problem. So now I'll say what I was gonna say before, which is mm -hmm. might be an idea even for the guide build to save a couple of um, ancient dragon smithing stones or somber ancient stones for when the DLC comes out, because there may be gear in the DLC that we might actually pivot into. I have no idea at present, so... That is true, actually. You know, the, the DLC might present you with something that's just insane right off the bat, so it might be worthwhile just holding on to a few, which no doubtably you would, because if you've been following the guide, uh, you should have a, a huge amount of surplus at this point. Watch out for this ambush as you come in the room for some sacramental buds. And by which I mean... Leave the sacramental woods where they are and don't deal with the ambush. Yeah, like this bit, this this uh, building just really isn't worth the hassle. Now there is a bit at the next building we're going to come to, uh, which leads essentially to the boss and the shortcut back to the the grace for this part of this area. I cannot stress enough how much I highly, highly recommend that you have assassins gambit for this next part. Or indeed anything that will obscure your vision to enemies, but Assassin's Gambit seems to be the best bet. There is uh, two or three battle mages that are incredibly strong and they can gang up on you. Assassin's Gambit allows you to take care of these battle mages one at a time. Because try to fight these two at a time as is genuinely it is a nightmare. It's actually horrendous. So for the love of fucking god, just use Assassin's Gambit. Um, yeah, this is this is Battle Mage Hughes's final form. Like we clowned on him in Dragon Barrow, and now there's two of them. Yeah, and, and he's back do, for fucking vengeance. They deal a lot of damage. Uh, you could also, if you really don't have Assassin's Gambit, putting on the um, the magic defense talisman, stacking for magic defense as well. If you really have to, Lion's Claw will also be your friend. But you know, if they just if they both cast a huge spell at you and you don't dodge it, you're probably likely just dead. So just be very careful of that. You wanted to make life a little easier for yourself. You see how there's three bridges. There's the middle one that leads up to the building we started in. You can actually jump from that bridge over to this platform with the lift on it. And this right. lift is the shortcut back to the start of the area. So I'm going to tell you not to do that jump because I tried it and I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, but you're bad. This is, this is also true, but just in case, I wouldn't recommend that method. But now, we're about to do the next boss, which is Loretta. Yeah, Loretta 2, Magic Boogaloo. Um, yeah. She's going uh, to be hysterically easy, because we have four great stars, and two of yeah. them have Lion's Claw. This is... So, if it's very strange how this game works. There is a weird distinction with enemies on the horse. Uh, some enemies on the horse act like the um, the Black Riders. Other enemies on the horse act like Loretta. And um, that basically means they will stagger every single time to a Lion's Claw. <laughs> yeah, it's Loretta, it's the Tree Sentinels, it's the Draconic Tree Sentinels. If you hit him with a Lion's Claw, bang, staggered. Bang, staggered. <laughs> like, just one after another, over and over and over again. And you can pretty much do this ad nauseum until she's dead. Yeah, her attacks are fairly easy to dodge. Uh, you know, the Mimic tier is pr is providing a fantastic uh, distraction. You're able to get your bleed in. Um, I think that might have propped the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. It, oh, I, I think we were just out of range, but it did for the Mimic tier. He, he got the, the Lord of Blood's proc off the White Mask. So that means... Very uh, nice. If, just, to, just to be so you're aware, our weapons inflict bleed. The headpiece we've got is the White Mask, and that... Um, Whenever we inflict bleed on something, or indeed if we get bled, it will increase our attack power. <laughs> yeah, it's got um, an amazing amount of synergy with uh, the build that we're rocking, and you can also stack the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman on top of that to get twice the bonus, basically. You are rewarded with Loretta's Mastery and Loretta's War Sickle. 
Um, you saw a very, very fast detour there where we picked up another ancient dragon smithing stone. Um, try not to die to this clean rot knight because for some reason this one seems to kill you like 50% of the time. And the grace is right there. So you could just run past it and light the grace if you were worried. Yes. Um, but now we're at the grace. It's uh, time we switch up our infusions because everything in the halo tree is actually vulnerable to fire. And so we swapped over to the fire infusion, as you can see. We have flaming strike on our offhand great stars, so we can buff it, which is nice. And also there's an tree avatar or two in this area. So as we've established in previous parts, flaming strike is the way to deal with those. Uh, speaking to Millicent here, just to advance a quest. Once you've exhausted her dialogue, which you should be doing for every NPC, once you've exhausted her dialogue, if you rest at the grace, she will disappear. We're not going to show that, but that is exactly what will happen. And she has now progressed to the final stage of her quest. Um, as you can see, fire fire infusion on Lion's Claw, doing very respectable damage. It's one-shotting these Halictory soldiers and foot soldiers without any difficulty. Um, and really, this section is just a long stretch of picking up items that are hidden in the little side rooms off the main path. Yes. Now, another thing to mention is that we've got the um, the Dragon Crest the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two on, and we've also got Shard of Alexander on, which increases the power of our Ashes of War. Thus, it'll increase the power of uh, Lion's Claw as if it needed that. And we've also increased the power of our flaming strike as well. But yes, yeah, so again, like you said, it is just picking up items from these particular guys. And these guys are, as you said, they are the Halley Tree soldiers and foot soldiers. So the foot soldiers could drop the Sacred Crown Helm, the Ivory Draped Tabard. We just picked up the Michaelin Knight Sword just there. And now we're going to apply um, uh, Assassin's Gambit. And we're doing this because we don't want to aggro the uh, the air tree avatar while we're down here. Well, thankfully, and... it was far enough away that that wouldn't have been a problem anyway. But yes. had it not been, Assassin's Gambit would have saved us um, a lot of trouble there. But now, now we're going to get it into like the right position, essentially. But now, uh, we are just going to flaming strike the fuck out of this. And as you can see, that does incredible damage. And it is just the same strategy. We're going to be rolling into its attacks. Unless it's this particular attack, in which case we want to run away from it. But every other attack, we want to roll into it and behind it. And then hit it with a flaming strike when we've got the opening. And it really is that easy because flaming strike is just that good against these guys. You see of so, using uh, Shard of Alexander here as well instead of something like the Fire Scorpion Charm is Shard of Alexander has no penalty. You don't yes. take increased damage by having it on. So it's better than any of the Scorpion Charms in this given situation. This is very true. Now, as we was saying before we had to talk about the Air Tree Avatar, the Foot Soldiers can drop the Sacred Crown Helm, the Ivory Draped Tabard. They can also drop daggers. Apart, I mean... I Apparently they only wield daggers according to this list, but they must wield, they'll drop whatever weapon they're carrying essentially. But the foot soldiers are just like the, the, well, the foot soldier looking guys. Uh, over here we've got um, Clean Rot Knights. So they can drop the Clean Rot Knights sword, the Clean Rot spear. They can drop the uh, full armor set. So that's the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves, and the, uh, the helmet, I guess. And then they can yep. also drop the Partisan and the Great Shield and the mm. just the normal shield. You're getting, a bit, you're getting a bit confused there. Clean Rot Knights can drop the Helmet, Armor, Gauntlets, Greaves, Clean Rot Knights, Sword, um, Clean Rot Spear and the Halo Scythe. The Soldiers can drop the Brass Shield, their full armor set, which is the Surcoat, the Gauntlets, the Greaves, the Helmet, um, the Lord Swan Straight Sword, the Heavy Crossbow and uh, various bolts, smithing stones, and other such the like. Yes, now these guys are the soldiers, and um, again, we're still just doing the just the general item run. So we're just killing enemies, picking up items. So just be yeah. following along with the path that we're taking, that's essentially it. Watch out in this area, by the way, because there are enemies over to the, to the right. There you go. Um, yeah. He is there to punish you if this guy with the shield stops you in the right place. And he almost did exactly that to us, so just be aware that there are a couple of enemies tucked away in this room off to the right. But luckily, we've got Lion's Claw. Jeez, what the fuck happened to the track in there? But yeah. 
Lion's Claw will take care of pretty much every guy. <laughs> Thought this guy was dead, just walked away with his life. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> Interrupted him taking a nap, I guess. Oh, God, man. Lion's Claw is putting in so much work in this area. It's actually crazy. It is, yeah. Um, there is an enemy sat behind us um, where we are now against that wall. Thankfully, he hadn't aggroed, and you get triple rings of light in here. Actually, a powerful incantation, but deals pure holy damage, and holy damage is generally kind of weak, unless you're fighting undead or death birds, something like that. Oh, um, now, specifically, just to make a point, the um, the air tree avatar that we killed, I'm pretty sure, uh, is guaranteed to drop the avatar's staff. I think it's the rotten staff. The rotten one. Well, the yeah. point is, is whatever it drops, it is guaranteed to drop that. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So jumping so, over onto this buttress here and then yeah. onto the platform with the gazebo. This is above the room that had the two clean rot knights in it. Um, speaking of clean rot knights, <laughs> be aware that this one's going to come out of this room. We're currently using Lion's Claw without FP, so it's not staggering. And we can be hit out of it. It does surprisingly good damage, even without the FP. It's actually kind of crazy. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, fire damage is exceptionally good versus Clean Rot Knights, which is another part of the reason we changed to that infusion. Um, in yes, here, you're getting yes. Clean Rot Knight Finley, which I believe is the last of the legendary, ashes, uh, legendary Spirit Ash. So if you pick that up and you've been following the guide verbatim, you have all of the legendary ashes and therefore the trophy which is nice. So heading over into this buttress, and then we go up it. And now we're coming to like a bit of like a, kind of a horrible encounter actually, but don't worry, we've got you covered for the perfect, beautiful strategy in order to do it. Um, now here we are getting one of the six seedbed curses in the game. Obviously we don't actually need it anymore. Um, if you were doing Dung Eaters, um, if you're doing Dung Eaters quest, then this is one of the seedbed curses you would need. Now, watch out for this guy doing this. I was just trying to get my bearings, but <laughs> now we need to run all the way back up again, because actually what we want to do is head across this buttress. And again, Assassin's Gambit putting in so much work, because uh, there is a few enemies that can um, be pelt new ranged attacks as you're running across here, and we don't want that. So we're killing this uh, Miranda flower. Uh, actually, do I even kill it? I think I either I might stop killing it because I just couldn't be arsed. But it means that when we go under where we are, the Miranda flower isn't cast and shit. Yeah, and thankfully, owing to the fire infusion as well as flame and strike, we are dealing about as much damage as we could be to this without swapping all of our gear out to fight one flower. Yeah, the amount of health and defense these things have is fucking crazy. Um, thankfully the Scarlet Rot it's uh, doing to you it does, isn't doing that much and we're also able to get back a fair amount of health back because of the uh, Great Stars so then we can just use Flame Cleanse me to get rid of it. Yeah, Great Stars has good healing, it can't quite outpace Scarlet Rot but in yeah. theory we could stack enough regen effects to have Great Stars be outpacing Scarlet Rot actually. In theory, yeah in theory. Probably not worth it but in theory. <laughs> no, but it'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> so it's also really good that you know the jump attack like a jump in l1 is enough to take care of these guys for the most part um we're, we're just we're actually the build is solidly geared for beating uh Halig tree and i'm really happy about that because this is certainly arguably the hardest area in the game um i you know, definitely could... argue that i would say that in general Halig tree is the um, toughest area in the game. I think it's yeah. harder than Far and Azula, but I think that's more a matter of personal preference. I think um, so. I, I think personally, I think Far and Azula is present the way the game presents it to you. It's supposed to be the last area, um, but I think that Halig Tree certainly is harder. I, I mean, I would class this as the last area just because of the difficulty. Yeah, and it does also house the hardest boss in the entire game, so... Yeah. I think I, I consider this one of the optional super difficulty areas... Yeah. ...that yeah. the Souls games tend to have. Um, the guys on the balusters we just killed, by the way, are the ones who would have been pelting you run acro running across the buttress that's parallel to this one, where we popped Assassin's Gambit. Hence yeah, the so need to. 
Yep, and uh, also the, the, the encounter below us is an absolute nightmare, but again, Assassin's Gambit really putting in the work. It's, it's definitely an, a, a big investment. So then we get the Halig Tree Knight's Helm, which is... Which uh, is kind of unique, actually. It's, yeah, it's part of the um, Halig Tree Knight armor, but uniquely, it's one that gives you a stat boost. I think it gives you additional faith, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, that is true. So here we are swapping our tiers out for the strength tier and the fire uh, damage tier. And then we are also putting on the fire scorpion charm. Uh, now we are massively stacking for fire damage because we're going to fight an air tree avatar in this fucking corridor. And at, and at this point, because we're right next to Grace, it's a case of, well, well, if we die, we die. But it is a bit of a pain in the ass. So we're just going to stack for damage and show you how much damage you could be doing to these things uh, if you gave a shit about how much damage you theoretically could be doing so i um we're going to be doing absolute fucking chunks to this guy look at that bang <laughs> bang yeah three flaming strikes to kill Th two and a half actually i'm, I'm counting that as two and a half yeah 100 percent. that's two and a half that is a frankly stupid amount of damage we were able to deal to this thing no um we're gonna. We're also stacking for damage because this particular encounter with these two guys here is horrendous. And if there wasn't an item to pick up, I would say just completely ignore them. But actually, these two Halig Tree Knights are some of the. This these two guys are some of the hardest guys in the entire game. Arguably, fighting both of them is harder than fighting the Air Tree Avatar. So we're stacking for damage because we're just like, right, you need to kill one extremely quickly. Because trying to fight two of them is just its just out of the question. If the game gave you a Spirit Ash that was these two Halig Tree Knights, it would outclass the Mimic and Tish. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Or at the very least, it would be on the same level as them. But now that they yeah. are both dead, we were able to pick up that item that was around the corner. Actually, did we even pick it up? No, we haven't done that yet. yet. No. We were almost going to sit at the Grace. Uh <laughs> So, uh, As what you can see, here? fire damage. Since we're stacked for fire damage, fire arrows are hitting for <laughs> chunks. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really good. <laughs> so then we're taking Assassin's Gambit. Uh, well, okay, apparently we did pick up that. Maybe we didn't. I guess we'll see when we turn around. And this is just so we can pick up this Arteria Leaf and this Golden Run 11 and not have to deal with any of these guys or get pelted off the baluster. All of yep. that for, for those three items. So you, it's up to you if you deem that worthy or not, but I certainly would not bother. At this point, we'll just be reverting our gear back to what it should be, what you'd be expecting it to be. Yes. Um, um, I don't know what I'm changing this to. I really think you should just keep Shard of Alexander on. Um, oh, yeah, we're putting the... Right, so yeah. we're putting the shortened spell casting time on, and we're also using the Azura's Glintstone staff because that also shortens your spell casting time because we are about to fight a bunch of revenants and for some reason at least my perception of the situation makes it seem that these revenants actually are uh, quicker to recover than the other ones so if you use assassin's gambit you can just do this this is how good assassin's gambit is and it means you don't really fight anything you just ignore it all and just come straight down the ladder and uh, <laughs> yeah this is what i would say just ignore fighting any of those guys what we just showed you just use assassin's gambit and come down here uh, but yes, we are using the um, the uh, spell the spell casting time buff items because what we noticed is that if you cast heal, if you are like even a millisecond out with your timing, the revenants can recover and just dodge away, and then they start becoming a problem. But if you have the spell casting time items on, you can actually cat like keep them, like hit them, they're stunned, and before they're out the stun, you can hit them again uh, quite reliably. So that is the, uh, that's the strat. Yeah, 100%. Um, to explain a little about how that works is dexterity shortens casting time in Elden Ring, as it does in all the Souls games, to be fair. But what the Radigan Icon and the Azur staff do... What the fuck? Where did you come from? <laughs> fuck off. Interrupted <laughs> me. Um... Yeah, the Radigan's Icon and the Azur staff give you, um... 40 virtual dexterity and 30 virtual dexterity, meaning it's not actually giving you the dex, just the effect of it. Um, Lord's rune. And they both stack. 
Lord's Rune is a very nice pickup here. This room has three Crystallians in it. Uh, I wouldn't personally fight them. I would just pick the items up, run, and then save quit. Uh, but by yeah, the I looks, we, we are going to fight them. I think we no, oh. I think we just use Assassin's Gambit, and I think that actually they don't even notice you. The the <laughs> the power of the cell. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying though. It gives you a ton of virtual dexterity and 70 virtual decks, or indeed real decks if you've invested. Gives you the shortest possible cast time, and since one gives you 40, one gives you 30, they both stack to give you the maximum possible cast speed. As yeah, I said, the uh... snake quitting there to <laughs> to de-aggro them. Aye, fuck them. But yeah, the, the revenants in this lane can really stack on the heart, so we really just don't want to take any kind of like, fighting these things without heal is a fucking nightmare. So, yeah, this is uh, this is just what we're going to do. And this is why uh, stacking for faith and a little bit of arcane is just worth it. Because you just get to have, like, the smallest stat investment to just make the hardest, most disgusting enemies in the game just nothing. Nice thing about heal as well is the AoE does not care about terrain. So you can just heal him round a corner, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, they didn't even see you do it. He just, he just died. He's like, what the fuck is going on? We are playing Elden Ring Solid right now. Yeah, yeah, we are. Stupid don't want to get caught out. Tactical s boyage action. <laughs> so we actually did get caught lacking with this last Revenant, but thankfully the AOE on heal is actually fucking massive. Yeah, and all this is actually required if you want all the achievements. Because the item behind this stone sword key, um, Imp Seal Door, is Marika's Saw Seal, which is one of the final talismans you need for You're the uh, legendary talisman trophy. Wow, I... I just, someone just followed on Twitch and thus, yep, that's what that noise was. Okay, so we're putting, um, <laughs> fucking hell. So we are putting uh, the Shard of Alexander back on, and there's three Crystallians that we actually have to fight. So we're just going to bait them one at a time, and then use Lion's Claw on them, like a, like a smart boy. Fight smarter, not harder, that's what I say. Apparently we're going to use Flaming Strike, which is... Yeah, apparently. That's I mean, was, it did the I job. Uh, I, th <laughs> I think I'm switching them in my hand, as, like right now, like as I'm fighting it. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I must have put the um, the flaming strike one on my main hand. Yeah, um, like, one of these the crystallians down this? here, I believe. Um, sorry to cut you off, but no, one no, of no. them down here, I think, is wielding the rotten crystal staff, and that is the enemy you would have to farm if you wanted the item. Um, there's no reason to have it. It's statistically identical to the crystal staff that you pick up in Leonia, but. Um, yeah, if you want the rotten one for whatever reason, this is where you get it. Uh, yeah, this is actually true. You are totally right. And uh, these ones can drop the rotten crystal spear as well. Now that is actually worth having. That's a very good weapon. One of the few weapons with innate scarlet rot. And despite the fact that you can't change its infusion, um, it is exceptionally long, it deals magic damage, has relatively good scaling, and the strongest form of poison in the game. So, it's all around not a bad weapon. God, just getting those little bits of healing off the great stars is just so, so good. Like, I think, basically, we healed, what, that's 12% of our HP, that'd be 14%, 16% of our HP just for killing that thing. Like, that stacks up over the course, the course of the game. And for that, we get the Rotten Crystal Sword. Yeah, the, the sister item to the Crystal Sword that you pick up in the village of the Albanorix. Um Again, as far as I'm concerned, this one's just better, because it's the Crystal Sword, except it also has Scarlet Rot. So, yeah. why would so, you well, not? Something to mention is the Halig Tree Knights that we uh, stacked all that fire damage to kill that's around the corner out in the courtyard out there. They can drop the armor of the Gauntlets of Greaves. They can drop the uh, the great sword and the shield. So they've got like a there's a great sword and like a sorry a great sword and a great shield variant. Then there's also a partisan variant, and um, they can drop the great bow as well. So basically, just they can drop whatever they're equipped, just like all the rest of them. And I think that's it for all the drops. Now I don't think there's anything else that's uh, surprising. 
Nothing surprising, but the enemies in this area are the kindred of rot. You can see oh, them yeah. pointing their art in the air here. Um, they can drop Aeonian butterflies, um, the pest slave, and is it faded earth earthly flowers? Uh, yes. Um... Now watch out for this one standing over in the rot here, because uh, he ambushes you and is kind of a pain in the ass to deal with, but we're hammering him with prelates charge, and you might be wondering why we have that, and it's simply to get through the rock quicker. Yes, this is just um, one way of doing it. You can indeed just backstep through the rock. You can use, um, oh, uh, what's it called? The dodge attack, dodge ash of war. Quick step, bloodhound step, yes. any of the above. So you can use them to get through the rot as well. Um, I'd highly suggest having at least one of them just to, just for for quickness's sake. Uh, possibly just having Bloodhound Step on a dagger, just to have a Bidoof dagger that's but Bloodhound Step just having in your inventory all the time is probably worth it. But I quite like Prelate's Charge, I think it's cool, and it's also probably the fastest method of getting across it as well. And funniest. It is the funniest also, yeah. <laughs> Because you don't even need to meet the requirements of uh, a weapon that has prelates charge in order to use the Ash of War in order to do it. So anybody can do it. You can actually have a, a Bidoof Great Hammer with prelates charge if you want. <laughs> That's fun. If anybody gets um, the Bidoof reference, then please stick it in the comments. So we're sort of ignoring a little section of the the rot waterfall there. Yeah. Um for the time being, and that's simply to grab this grace before we go back and do it. And the reason being because there is uh, a rather annoying enemy there that has the propensity to just kill you outright. Um, spoilers, it's a rotten, ulcerated tree spirit. Yes, um, indeed. And so what we're doing, I think, is just setting up so that we can deal the maximum amount of damage to it. Well, um, um, so strictly speaking... Ignore the equipment changes, what you see just now, um, actually. Well, I, okay, maybe maybe not, right? Basically, the equipment changes, actually, these specific equipment changes are for um, uh, Millicent's quest that's coming up. Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. yeah. So we, we got a plus eight Banished Knight's Halberd from killing... Um, am I going to talk about this now? Because our gear just switched back. <laughs> we'll see. I, okay, so I understand that this edit is a little bit awkward. I'm really sorry. There was a lot of deaths in this particular bit of footage until we got it right. Um, but you'll, you'll just see. In this case, just um, follow along with what we're doing and what works and then adjust your stuff accordingly. Uh, that Basically, that, that equipment switch there is just this would be the time that you use to switch up your equipment. Um, Except now we actually have to switch it up again slightly. I know, I know, awkward because there is an ulcerated tree spirit and we need to kill this. Now, do we want to fight an ulcerated tree spirit in a pool of scarlet rot? Do we fuck? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the bow to kill it from a distance. Um, this is actually the way I've killed this ulcerated tree spirit every single time. But what we're going to do is put on the... Um, so we're putting on the fire scorpion charm. That one does stick. And then we're putting on the arrow sting talisman to raise the power of your arrows. And then we're also putting on the ritual sword talisman because we're going to be at full health. Uh, it's going to give us just a straight up a little bit of an attack boost. Now, all of this attack boost and stuff just isn't really necessary. Um, it's just going to speed the process up a little bit. But you can just use you could use an unupgraded bow and infinite arrows, uh, infinite arrows if you have them, and that will still kill it eventually. So. Aye, it's just going to take a million billion years. But don't worry, we do speed this bit up. It's pretty self-explanatory. Shooting a thing with a bow will kill it eventually. And that actually is uh, advice that applies to real life. Not just this game. <laughs> I suppose that's true, yeah. Um, you're seeing us use fire damage stacking against it because it's a tree... Um, yeah, ulcerated tree spirit. It's insanely weak to fire. You can also bleed this. So if you were using, say, the poly crossbow and the bird bolts that you get an infinite number of from the merchant I said to kill last episode. Um, you can just bleed this thing out. Unfortunately, you can't rot it, I don't think, because that would make it even faster. Um, anything with black flame, so if you had the ability to cast, say, um, black fireball, um, that would be doing good damage against this. Uh, the destined death ash of the black knife would also kill this quite quickly. Um... 
you'd have ways and means. We just chose stacking for fire damage since we had yeah. so much of it laying around. It's kind of dealer's choice, but I think just using the bow is the uh, just the simplest method. And now we're just putting the the normal equipment back on. Um, again, that equipment might change for the upcoming uh, footage. Uh, we do have two footage of killing. Uh, so basically, we're doing Millicent's quest now, and you have to fight four NPCs at once. And sadly, Wild Strikes just isn't enough because you need to keep Millicent alive as well. So this is one bit of the game where actually uh, you do miss out on an item depending on the choice that you make. The choice that you have to make here is choosing whether or not to help Millicent or hinder Millicent. If you choose to side with Millicent's sisters to kill Millicent, your only reward is the Millicent's prosthesis. Gives you extra dexterity and a damage boost with consecutive attacks. If you choose to help Millicent to defeat her sisters, all four of them, you get the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which is the strongest consecutive attack damage boost in the game, and it does not stack with the Wing Sword Insignia, unlike Millicent's prosthesis. So if you're going solely for the Talisman, that is the choice you have to make. If you help Millicent, you also get access to the Unalloyed Gold Needle for finishing her quest, which allows you to, once you've defeated Melania, reverse the Frenzied Flame ending, and you're also rewarded with an additional Somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. Now, if you don't care about that, then you could get the Millicent's Prosthesis for the stacking damage boost. If you do care about that, you're going to have to help Millicent, which is the harder of the two encounters, but we have methods, ways and means of making that significantly easier. Now, this is one of two choices in the game that allow you to miss out on things. So you can get pretty much every single thing in the game in one run, aside from you have to make a choice between the Feli's Puppet and Dung Eater's Puppet, or the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and um, the Unalloyed Gold Needle and what comes with that, or Millicent's Prothesis. So now what we're doing here is we're actually just going to stack for fire damage like we did with the Air Tree Avatar and the Halid Tree Knights. So we've got the um, the Strength tier, the Fire tier in our Physic Flask. We've got Shard of Alexander, the Flame Scorpion Charm. We're going to use Golden Vow and we're just going to be spamming Flame and Strike. Uh, you, you really want to try and <laughs> go for Millicent's sisters that are like attacking her because you want to get them off her arse. Because if she dies, obviously you fail this and you leave her world but you can really stack quite a huge amount of damage but the thing is is that she can be so vulnerable um that it's, it's just not even funny but honestly like maximizing damage uh, this is definitely the simplest method to go uh, to go for because it means you don't need to change your equipment at the grace but uh what you're going to see in a second is a second method in case you just can't get this to work you can try the second method which is uh which explains what the equipment change at that last grace was but as you can see, that was pretty good. And now Millicent's alive. You want to just, you know, go for the sisters that are attacking her. Um, but if you were using this method, so it's using Black Flame Tornado, uh, it allows you to hit multiple sisters over a period of time. So you can kind of get them all sort of stunned uh, a little bit. Uh, so this method is also pretty good. Uh, and this uses the equipment setup that we used at the Grace, just to bear that in mind. Because remember, there's that weird edit that was like five minutes ago. Uh, now this is good because it can keep these guys stunned, but also uh, it means Melisic can kind of get out of the way. But the thing is, is it doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as what Flaming Strike does. So just be be very uh, careful. Now if you die, uh, you won't lose your runes, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, you can just keep coming back as well to try this encounter over and over and over. It's not a case of just one and done. If it was, uh, God, this would be one of the worst fucking encounters in the game but you can just keep trying it until you eventually win and i think that kind of sums this encounter up yeah yeah that pretty much covered everything <laughs> i go, think go, the distinction to be made there is if you're using there's rotten wing sword insignia as your yep. reward that's a stacking uh stacking damage boost with consecutive attacks but now it's time to head over here and finish millicent's quest proper you stand you talk to her um, she removes the unalloyed gold needle, so she succumbs to the scarlet rot, and once you've exhausted her dialogue, is this one where we need to save quit, or is this one where she just perishes? Uh, it looks like we save quit. Yeah, when you save quit and you reload, um, Millicent will be gone, you get the unalloyed gold needle, and that allows you to 
revert the frenzied flame ending if you so wish. Uh, yes. The comment I was going to make about the different methods for fighting Millicent Sisters is in the first method, it was us dealing the majority of the damage, just reverting our gear back to what it should be. Um, in the second method, it was Millicent dealing out most of the damage. So she can actually hold her own, just not against four at once, which yeah. is really why the second method is is quite effective. The first that one, is... arguably better, but the second one does still work. The, 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 set, the first method used, like, stacking for fire damage certainly means that you don't need to re-change your equipment again. So that's definitely the advantage. And you can really put down so much fucking damage. It's, stacking fire damage is kind of wild in this game, actually. And uh, also, right there at the end, we switched our... Remember to switch your Physic Flask back to the, um, the HP regen and damage negation is kind of the standard one. But yeah, now we're just heading uh, heading out here, and this is kind of the uh, the last part before the boss. And uh, I'm sure you've all been wondering how the fuck we're going to beat Millennia, but oh god, we beat Millennia. So heading down at this bit again, man, it's crazy how Assassin's Gambit just paying dividends in this area. Uh, you can just get pelted off so many of these guys, but fucking hell, they are weak to fire. So yeah, Flaming Strike is almost as Flaming Strike for Halig Tree is I want to say like. Similar, similar in uh, utility to like sacred blade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's kind of an interesting way of putting it. Actually, yeah, F a flaming strike is to hailing tree what sacred blade is to anything that's undead. Yeah, yeah. No, this has been really, really good for this area. And then we got the uh, the dragon crest, great shield talisman, and now we're we're actually going to see. I I felt like you see like noticeable like oh the the amount of damage we're taking now is like reasonable. Yeah, the Dragon Crest Great Shield equates to about a twenty percent damage decrease from enemy attacks. So it is a fucking substantial boost to how much damage you can actually take in a fight. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't recommend combining it with any one of the sword seals. You're gonna get really bad value for money if you're doing that. But uh yeah, now now you know we're level one forty, we've got uh We've got the Dragon Crest Talisman on. Yeah, we're, we're, do we're doing good. We're doing good. Now, you could indeed switch out the uh, Shard of Alexander for the Crimson Seed Talisman to get more HP back from your uh, Crimson Flasks. That's actually a fairly solid idea, but to guarantee one shot in most enemies in this area, probably better off going with Shard of Alexander. So we're just grabbing that grace there because it means we can kind of... War it's... There's a lot of enemies and it is hard to warp away from them, but it means that we can just warp back to that grace without having to run back um, when it comes to it. But yeah, now we're just heading through this bit of forest, which is surprisingly empty with nothing in it. You'd think there'd be like an item that means something, but nah, there's fuck all. And using Assassin's Gambit again, because there are some Halic Tree Knights down here. Um, and if we can get away with not fighting them, we will. We only had to fight the ones earlier on because it's pretty much impossible to pick up the items around them yeah. without fighting them. But here, there's fuck all worth picking up and you can run straight to it and not have to fight anything. As you can now, see, I think we've only aggroed one enemy and that's because we landed on his fucking head. Uh, so I think, honest, honest to God, I think Assassin's Gambit m might be one of the best Ashes of War in the game. And the weird thing is it doesn't really come up so much until late in the game when getting ganged up off enemies is like an absolute nightmare because otherwise the build can just completely deal with anything the game throws at you but the, the difficulty really ramps up in these like last few later areas and assassin's gambit is just fan fucking tastic because uh in this area you do not want to be getting pelted off multiple pest threads off these guys but with assassin's gambit that just doesn't happen so yeah, it's good. Uh, so what you want to do is, on your way down, uh, kill as many of these guys as possible. That way, when you're done on your way back, you can just warp straight back. But there's a, a lot of these um, Kindred of the Rots and the, the little ones, and they're, just, they're kind of hard to see. Yeah, the little just... ones aren't such a big deal. It's really the ones with the glaive that you want to worry about. Um, yeah. If you have any kind of ranged fire damage, um, it would come and clutch you. It would be very, very useful to have. Um, we don't have that much range fire damage outside of the bow, and 
there was no sense in stacking the fire damage on the bow in this area when we can just run up and use flaming strike like you see <laughs> flaming strike is actually really funny looking as well it's like it's suddenly your great stars which is like a giant metal mace is like made out of polystyrene and you're just able to swing it like it's just fucking nothing <laughs> <laughs> We picked up one of the last bell bearings down there. That's yes. the, I believe that's the Ghost Level Up Picker's Bell Bearing Three, um, which gives you access to uh, sevens, eights, and nines for Ghost Level Up. So there we go. Like I said, you were just we're just going to warp straight back here once we have the chance after picking up the, the items in that little side bit. And now this is technically a shortcut. It's just one, just because you can warp in these games, these shortcuts really mean nothing. But uh, yeah, you'll see that we are back at the uh, the air tree avatar, the first one, sort of. We're not back at it because we killed it, but this is where it would be. And uh, now we can go and get the last item in in this little bit. I don't know why we waited until this point to get this item. I because, think because there's no it's... elegant way to get it. Yes. Uh, so if you were to come here immediately, uh, you'd have to warp back to that first uh the first grace with Millicent and that's just kind of out the way so just doing it at this point that's the last seed bed curse that's the sixth seed bed curse in the game uh again that's only for dung eaters ending and we're not doing it so yes now we're going to head back to round table hold you know up you know use the last of our uh runes upgrade whatever we can upgrade but now we will be doing Melania, and I'm sure you've all been waiting on bated breath of what the fuck we're going to be using to uh, defeat Melania. And we have, uh, we've actually got three methods for you. One is a, a dex method that is that I felt was incredibly good. So what we're doing is we're just going to use, um, we're just going to upgrade both our curved swords as much as they can go. Um, you probably don't even need to fully upgrade your curved swords in order to get this because most of your damage has come from bleeding frost. But yes, um, you could also theoretically do this with the katana, but the dual curved swords are better than the katanas. And now they're upgraded. We Now, again, this is just one method. But uh, first of all, we're going to show you the method with the great stars because obviously we've came this far with the great stars. We're going to show you this method first. I think that the great stars method plus mimic tier is fantastic it's it's just great how the build is so geared towards beating millennia just to begin with um so really what you ideally want to do is immediately quit out because then uh, when you come in through the fog gate millennia is much further away it gives you time to get your stuff off much better but otherwise uh, despite the fact that this is the first attempt it's it's just good enough uh, so, literally all we're going to be doing is using Lion's Claw. <laughs> Lion's Claw and jumping L1s. <laughs> we'll just keep... Look at this. Look at this. This is it. This is, all you need to... this is all you need to do because she has so little poise compared to how fucking strong she is. Just time your attacks with the <laughs> with the Mimic tier and just spam Lion's Claw at her. And it's just... It's just that good. Now, when you get into your second phase, you want to run straight for her and under her and past her so you can avoid this attack because um, you, if you get caught in that, you'll get extremely rotted extremely quickly. But now it is just the same process. Jumping L1s, uh, Blood Flame Blade if you've got it on, and uh, Lion's Claw. Now when it comes to this attack, I do not know how to dodge it. I am just mashing the fuck out of Circle and hoping to God she doesn't hit me enough to regain a lot of her HP. That is genuinely my tactic on it. I don't care what people have said that you can or can't do to avoid it. I just can't. But the cool thing is, is this build, is th this particular strategy is good enough that you just don't even need to really give a shit. As you can see, you're just timing your attacks with the Mimic tier and just hoping that she doesn't do Waterfowl, which is the attack that I can't dodge. If she does uh, this attack, again, you're just running away. You can use this time to apply a buff, heal up if you need to, but otherwise you're just running straight back in, jumping out ones, timing your attack with the Mimic tier and firing off some, uh, some Lion's Claws. Now, the Mimic tier, because the Mimic tier also regains HP because of the, the Great Stars, shockingly can hold its own against Melania almost by itself, uh, which is something I noticed. So that is um, 
That is the great stars method for Melania, and lo and behold, who knew Lion's Claw was that great? I mean, certainly not us. That's the first time us. we've used it. So, so this particular setup, we've got the dual curved swords. Uh, we've got double slash, uh, double slash, double slash, double strike in the uh, in the scavenger's curved sword. We've got the rotten wing sword insignia and shard of Alexander on, and that's kind of it. Uh, we're getting most of our value out of uh, double slash and blood flame blade, and. Oh, actually, we won't even get Blood Flame Blade because it's just Blood Infused. You could use Blood Flame Blade if you want. That could be slightly better. But um, honestly, just eyes on the prize here. We're just using uh, Double Slash. And it is crazy how good Double Slash is. Really, really, really crazy. Now, we're putting up Lift and Aromatic in our item bar because the Mimic tier can just randomly pop it in order for us to get a, a, a Bubble Shield every now and then. Which is actually kind of cool because it kind of offsets not having the Bubble Shield on our physic flask we can just kind of get one periodically from the mimic tier so go mimic tier thanks a lot now people say that you can lob frost pots at melania i have uh, to get her out of the waterfowl as soon as she jumps in the air just throw a frost pot i have never been able to hit her by doing that never once has that worked for me but apart i have seen it work so I i'm bad go figure but because i'm bad i was able to uh, generate uh, a method for beating Melania that I think almost anybody could do, and it pretty much just involves spamming L2 at her with double slash. So, this is me using the quit out method. Um, you can just go rest to heal up and then go straight back. And now, when you go in, you will go in through the fog gate, you won't get teleported to her, and this gives you the time to uh, summon the mimic to your heal up, do what you gotta do while she's running at you. So, yep, uh, just casting Golden Vow to get a little bit, and now we are... I'm going to grab my souls first. But, wow, the Mimic, Mimic Tier is fucking putting in the work. Holy shit, go Mimic Tier! So, yeah, uh, Double Slash is so fucking good because it can uh, it will inflict an insane amount of bleed so, so quickly. Again, if you're timing your attacks with the Mimic Tier, you can just keep her staggered for so long. Look at that. That is so much bleed build-up that you're able to put up. She is very weak to bleed, actually. And there we go. This is, is honestly, it's actually very, very similar in, um, in execution to using the, the dual great stars, actually. So when she does this, you can just take a, a blue flask and uh, heal up. And then what, what are you doing? Oh, you're just fucking spamming double slash at her again. It's really just as simple as that. Now, she's a little bit tougher in this form uh, compared to her first, but again, she will stagger if you proc the bleed. And trust me, you're going to proc the bleed. And if she's uh, doing this attack on you, that gives you a chance to heal up. Um, I do think that the uh, the Great Stars method is a little bit better, but trust me, this is... If, you, if you're if you using, like, a dex build, this is this is really your, your method. Um, because you're able to take down uh, Phase 1 so easily that it then gives you a huge amount of your resources for phase two. Now, she's getting particularly trigger happy with the jump attacks. But yeah, um, just stick to the game plan and eventually... God, she really loves jumping in this form, for fuck's sake. Fucking Mimic Teal's nearly fucking out of it. I mean, honestly, not that it did matter. Um, this method is reliable enough to work even without the Mimic tier. Um, you could get this to work if you were just soloing Melania. Yeah, no, I have done that. I have done that. So you could I also <laughs> even realistically <laughs> finish it with a Freezing Pot. Nice. Freezing yeah. Pot's built up an insane amount of Frostbite on a single use, which is why you can use them to stagger her out of Waterfell Dance if she goes for that in her first phase. Um, they are incredibly effective. Yes, at doing and, exactly that. And uh, for that, we get Melania's rune and her remembrance. But there is a third method for Melania, if you can believe. Well, this third method's actually kind of uh, two methods. It's two tricks in one. And this is footage you're seeing from my parallel run, or indeed a second parallel run I did. And it's very gear-dependent, this method. So you need a very hard-hitting uh, uh, Colossal Sword. You need the Giant Hunt, Ash of War, you need Ground Slam, and you need something that's a Katana or bigger. Because the poise damage of everyone's favourite Ash of War making its reappearance, Ground Slam, is dependent on the poise damage of the weapon you are holding. 
So you need a katana or bigger. I happen to be using the Nagakiba, but any of them would work. And you can chain Giant's Hunt into swap weapons, two hand, ground slam, take the repost, rinse and repeat. You can do this until Millennia is dead. This is an infinite, it's a true infinite, it works 100% of the time, she cannot even fight you. If you have this gear, this arrangement, and I'm getting FP back every time because I'm wearing the uh, Assassin's Cerulean Dagger, and it just means that I can sustain this method for even longer, so if even if I had lower damage, even if the weapons weren't upgraded, I could sustain this for long enough that I could completely rinse Melania um, from start to finish in the fight without being able to do anything. But this brings us neatly to method two, which is she doesn't die from a repost. She will die from a volcano pot. Now, the cutscene is going to be sped up, but you need to watch a certain amount of it play out. Uh, you should be good to cut the cutscene short when you see her turn into the Scarlet Flower. But after this point, when she spawns in, she's got no fucking health left because the Volcano Pot remains active through the cutscene, as does her hitbox, so you can just completely delete her. And I feel like everybody needs to know about this. If you finish her with a repost and you have a Volcano Pot, this works 100% of the time. Finishing so her off with the Volcano Pot's there. So does and, that mean she uh, literally can't die from a repost? No, she can't. She cannot take lethal damage from a repost. It'll put her at one health. Wow, that's fucking incredible. Yep. So Resident the Grace will spawn this big flower, and we can get Michaela's Needle or Michaela's Needle or whatever, and then Somber Ancient, Dragonsmith, and Stone. Now, we only get that if we have the unalloyed Gold Needle, and that's what turns into Michaela's Needle or Michaela's Needle, however you fucking pronounce it. So now we are warping back to Gowrie. And uh, also specifically, it's... Uh, I'm going to go with Mikula's Needle. Um, so specifically... It is Mikula. Got... Okay, well, if you use Mikula's Needle, uh, that is what you need to reverse the Frenzy Flame Ending. If you so want to reverse the Frenzy Flame Ending. But it's six... It doesn't really matter. But now we're going to speak to Gowrie and uh, exhaust his dialogue, and then I think we kill him. Indeed we do. And for killing him, you are rewarded with, I believe, the Phlox Canvas Talisman, as well and... as his bell bearing. Yes, yes. Uh, the Phlox Canvas Talisman is an 8% buff to your incantation damage. So, very nice thing to have if you are doing a faith build, using a lot of incantations. Uh, it's a good utility. So, Millicent's quest is kind of necessary to get max... Uh, Incant damage. So now we are we we're going to the Weeping Peninsula and we're gonna use the teleport box uh from this tower to get to um Melania's uh isolated tower. And uh the reason why we need to go with this method is because we have uh ignited the the big bowl or whatever, the forge. We've ignited the forge. And because it's changed Lindell to Ash and Lindell, we have to go via this method. We can't just go from Lindell. So you could just go from Lindell uh, to here if you wanted to, um, if you hadn't already uh, sacrificed Melania. Or Melina or Melina Melina. or Melina. For fuck's sake. Well, the point is, just do what we are doing and you can fucking get Melania's Great Rune. Why is Melania every name Great Rune? M? <laughs> it depends whose family they're part of. Anyway, Melania's Great Rune gives you effectively Bloodborne's rally mechanic. You don't lose health immediately, you lose a portion of the health, and you can regenerate some of it back by attacking enemies. Well, that's quite cool. It's not very effective, because it also lowers the effectiveness of your healing flasks. Although you can mitigate that with Crimson Seed, so... Um... And, um... Technically, we did show this last episode, but there's a Lord's Divine Fortification, which actually showed up at the end of last episode, because we've already technically been to the Halig Tree, so it's already in, um, it's already in the Twin, the twin Main Husk Inventory. But there you go! That is it for Halig Tree. So now it's on to the last part. And okay, there we go, that's Halig Tree. Done! Join us in part 44, where we're going to be doing Ashen Lindell. Now, other than liking and subscribing, 
You can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.